Hey guys, Scott from Realistic Outdoors. Stay tuned, I'll show you to make one of these. Good morning, Scott from Realistic Outdoors. In the shop today as the uh, weather starts to get cold, yeah, I like to, um, to build some stuff. This last spring or fall season, I realized that I have a fishing net that's kind of getting old and it's a little bit too small for some of the places I've been going. And my big net is way too big to pack around on, on my back with some waders. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna show you um, how I make a fishing net. And this is my first time. I don't have a lot of tools. I've got a bandsaw and a planer. So, oh, and a, and a sander. So that's pretty much all I'll be using. Uh, I may use a jigsaw for some stuff. So just a bare minimum. And probably you could do all of this with just a jigsaw and a hand planer. Um, a table saw would be preferable. And um, I borrowed a friend's to cut some strips. So we'll get started. I will show you step by step and as quick as I can in a very short video on how to make a net. Stay with me. Thanks. Now that I have the jig sanded up, I just want to do one final test to make sure that the net that I bought um, fits on there and it fits on just, just snug, light, snug. So this is a 40, uh, 40 inch all the way around circumference net and I drew that out with a um, uh, flexible tape so that I knew when I was making my jig it'd be 40. 40 inches all the way around and it turns out it is 40 inches all the way around so this will actually fit exactly because the wood is on the outside and this will be on the inside so I know this is the perfect size now I can attach it to my form and uh, get ready for some bending the scary part
Okay, well, I've decided that I'm going to use a steamer instead of just soaking it. So I've went and bought this um, drapery steamer from Walmart of $66 Canadian. I'm sure it's probably $8 American. Uh, I took the actual wand off, all the screws and stuff, so I can get it apart. And then I can still put it back together if I want to use it for drapes or clothes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole into this cap and fit this into here and make it a, a reasonably decent seal. I've measured this off to 6 feet or 72 inches. I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to drill uh, three sets of holes, small ones, straight through. I got some thin stainless wire which I'm going to run through. And those will be my shelf brackets for the for the actual wood and then I will build a stand right now to hold it in place and to have one side slightly higher than the other with a drain hole to drip out. That shouldn't take too long. This whole thing costs under 70, 80 bucks. If you have one of these around the house or paint, uh, paint steamer, uh, nope, wallpaper stripper, you could do the same thing. If you have one of these in the house, you could do the attachment somehow without having to piss off your wife so you don't have to break it and apparently uh, steaming the wood is going to be um, a lot easier so I'm gonna give this a go and we'll see you on the other side okay before I have to change the battery I just cut all these parts out from the uh, scrap pieces from making the actual jig so I'm just gonna glue these on Glue and screw, a little stabilizer on the front, a little on the back, and this side is three quarters inch lower than this side, so when it sits up, the uh, steam that condenses will be able to run out the drain hole. So I'm just going to glue and screw that together, and uh, we'll get right back. I could get it. Then I put in a couple wraps of black tape. So I'm going to try and uh, unscrew it and tighten that into the black tape. And that's that's a tight C right there. And now I'll just put some black tape on this side to hold it in place. And she is good. Shouldn't be able to go anywhere. Or it can't go backwards. This will be the door as well. So I have a handle on here. Right. That's kind of forcing it back on. So there we go. And I'll just cover the sleeve up. I'll slide this get one back on. Tighten it up. That should be it. That should be able to pop on there and steam away. Now all I gotta do, drill a few holes straight across, put some wire in there, and then I'll be able to lay the, the wood on top of the wire. I'll probably go one third the way up, so it's got some space underneath, but still gives me some, some height in case I use some bigger wood. I'm gonna do that now, and then we're gonna try some steaming. Okay, I drilled one small hole through here. I've got some stainless wire. Let's see if I can get it through. This could be a chore, I'm not sure. Looks 
Is it UV? Oh, there's UV. So my only plan was to rain it and tighten it, give it a couple turns, snip it off. And now I have a nice bed in there. So I'll do this in three or four places, probably four. First one's crooked, but yeah, I got the steamer filled up. I'm gonna do a one-hour test. I got two pieces of wood in there now. I've added this backbone on here because this PVC was sagging. So if I keep doing this, if I like what I'm doing, I'm gonna build the box, a wood box. An actual steam box but this will be fine for a test for now as long as this doesn't collapse in an hour we'll be laughing so we're we are steaming away this is very very warm in there now so come back in an hour and see what we got okay so we apparently have a pvc fail sitting on that rack it was just folding in half so I laid it flat on the table and it's taking the weight up and I just moved one of the legs lower than the other leg so that it's still laying flat. It's pumping steam all the way out to the other end, dripping some water out the hole. Uh, it's working, but I think I need some black sewer pipe. not like lace wood. I failed you. You trusted me. I failed you. Well, I guess you just don't know until you try, right? So, PVC. This was a fail. <laughs> I don't know why I never thought of that when I bought the PVC. Like $10 cheaper than the PVC. So I grabbed it. Oh, Scottish boy. Anyway, that PVC has now been recycled. It is now my soaking tube because it collapsed, as you've seen. So I've uh, took a bit of scrap here and then I built an actual wood chamber. As seen on TV, all the YouTubes, it's really trashy lumber, it's all I had. So basically I just put the tube on there with a three quarter inch hole. And because on the last test I noticed this gets so soft, it gets sagging, comes out. I wired it just to be sure. Um, the temperature probe in there now. And um, I had to increase the size of these steam holes because uh, it was getting really hot pressure. And just a little door with some some foam seal on it. I ran some, some caulking in the edges where the wood was kind of gross. Probably didn't need it. And I've got a few drip holes on the bottom, which um, are dripping as we speak. It's on an angle, so the steam's gonna rise. I see I'm losing some steam here. Um, I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, I guess from the actual holes there. Yeah, it's coming from the actual drip holes. Uh, and then it goes uphill and uh, you can see the steam's coming out of the, the holes. Maybe you can't see it, but anyway. And then the water runs back down. And that's all I've got, so hopefully this works.
this was practice wood, so I didn't draw the center line. So these didn't come right to the end, which would be fine because they're gonna get sanded off probably right around there anyway for the grip. So you won't see much of that anyway. Not too worried about that. Another thing I did, I added a heat gun blowing on my mold for the 10, 15 minutes that this was in the steamer to preheat this. And then I had it on low while I was bending to actually keep some heat on it. So it didn't cool so fast because I found those thin strips were, were cooling very, very fast. Also, this isn't my handle. This is a temporary shaper that I've put in there. Um, my handle is, I'm working on it right now. So I needed this for the bend and that'll come out when I actually do the glue up. So far, so good. One other thing I learned, I thought this board would be nice and pretty, but I can't get my hands under to tighten the clamps down. So for the glue up, before that, I'm gonna cut around here so that it exposes the handles so I can get at my, cause I don't have any of the top clamps. Well, I've got a couple, one big one, two tiny ones, but these clamps will be what I'll be using. So I'm gonna need to get in at them like this all the way around. Okay, I built myself a little sled here to go into my planer. I've also got a, a two by 10 that I've strapped in there just so it comes in evenly and out evenly without lifting so I don't get any snipe on the ends. I've got double-sided mounting tape in a few spots here to keep this glued down. So you can see I'm lifting this board up so it's quite Rigid. It'll keep it from getting sucked up into the planer and I'm going to try and plane that down a little bit thinner So hopefully I'll get a, a decent thin strip for bending It's probably a little loud, but steamer is getting up to temperature. It's at 195 degrees now. I have my mold heating up with my um, heat gun. Got the mold prep. My clamps are out. I'm just about to put my laminates. They're marked for center. I'm just about to put them into the steamer and get stressed out. The stress is about to start. Yikes. cracking something's trying to make cracking sounds here
I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> My hand is physically shaking. And there was no cracks. There was a slight sound up in this corner. But I don't see any splits yet. Um, other than this being a little uneven at this point, which should be fine because we're only shaping. We're not... Uh, we're not gluing. So the shape should be okay. And that is all nice and tight to my form or to my handle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, other than it being a little bit high over here, which I don't know if I want to try and solve at this point. I think I'll just leave it like that. Tighten everything up. Um, because I just want it to form to this wood so that when the glue up happens, it's already in shape. So I'm going to call that a success. Right now, that is a success. I think I'd like to get one more clamp down here. If I can find one. I haven't been that stressed since I got my driver's license. I gotta tell you. That is, I'm happy with the clamp. There's a little bit of unevenness on the parallels, on the on the um, the pieces of wood. However, um, like I said, I just they're in the right shape. It just needs to dry for, I'm going to let it dry for a couple days. Maybe I won't work on this the weekend. Today's Wednesday. I soaked these boards um, for 30 hours. And, and then I steamed them for 15 minutes at 210 degrees. So, yay. I'm going to let that sit. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Oh, and one other thing. I know I didn't go over this, but I did make a handle. Um, let me see if we'll see this. I just glued two pieces. I don't think I recorded it. Two pleat pieces of IPE and some of the um, leftover maple ends that I had from um, one of the other projects I was doing. So I just glued them all together. And then I just cut it out. I still got to do a little bit of shaping here. So that I can stick it in that place for the glue up. This is IPE, which is like an ironwood. I wish I could bend that, but that's uh, it's super heavy and and will never rot. And I think it's burn proof, but anyway, or fireproof or fire retardant. <sighs> okay, I need a drink. See you guys in two two days. Well, guys, this is it. It's been uh, thirty hours cooling. I am going to pop it out of here and see if I got any splits in the wood and then I'll get ready for gluing it up. Let's see what we got. I am expecting some spring back. How much? Maybe it'll go pop right out and be flat and straight again. I hope not. As long as I can get it back into this shape while I'm gluing it. I will be super happy. Not too bad, not too bad. That's exciting. So I should be able to glue that back. Restretch that into position. Right, hopefully. Yes, 
Yes. There we go. I got four. Now that it's been stained, it looks green. Or steamed. But that is purple heart. It should turn purple once it's sanded up. So I think I'll just give these a quick light sand just to prep them for gluing. I mean, they're okay, but you know, who knows what's in the water afterwards. I don't see any actual cracks on the lace wood. Purple Heart seems to seems to be pretty good. Held the shape pretty good. No cracks. I'm just trying to make sure there's no sharp angles so when it bends onto the wood I can sand the inside flush but I can't I can't bend it around if it's got a little wibble wobble so I'll just keep testing this here until I get a good pinch and that's tight and that's the other thing I gotta figure out how I'm going to get that right there to close because I can't get that right tight there so let's see what happens here it's good that I have a spare piece for testing this out because you know you don't want to find this out while you're gluing it up now that appears So, I'm not sure it'll work for sure, but I have cut some wedges you can see there. And once I get this all clamped best I can, except for this little space right there on the handle, I'm going to put a couple screws into the wood and then I'm going to jam some wedges on both sides to try and add. Um, some pressure into that corner it's a trick that we use in the sign business and it works really well um, so we'll see because I can't seem to get a clamp at the angle I want so I'm using here just a Gorilla white glue wood glue I've been using Gorilla for just about everything whether it's the foaming glue or the white glue I have had nothing but amazing luck with it. I have had some failures with some other glues. I shall rename Nameless because I don't like to kiss and tell. Alright, so let's put that on there. There's one down. Now, I also have a metal strip. That I'll be putting around the outside just so when I don't put any marks in the clamp. Yeah, that one. So on these ones, you have to glue on the inside and the outside, so it might get a little messy. But what's a little mess?
I'm just going to put them on here kind of loose. I'm going to go around and make sure that they're all flat on the bottom. Is during the dry up. They all seem to be yeah, see, like they're starting to get like that right now. I need to make sure that they're pushed down. Those are not exactly the same width. It's hard to tell right away. Okay, well, it's glued up. Um, I don't have enough clamps. I know you look at that and go, you got too many clamps. I need some more of these for sure. I ended up not having enough pressure in between and not having another one in between. So I had to cut some aluminum um, angle or uh, U-channel that fits into my, into my, um, into my clamps so that it would actually spread the pressure a little more so I was actually getting a little bit bigger push instead of a skinny spot. I did have some issues getting this tight. The nail thing worked but I couldn't get at it with all the clamps here so at the very end I drilled two holes here to get my clamps into and of course I had shavings everywhere and that made a mess and now I have shavings in all my glue. I blew it off best I could. Um, it looks tight in these corners now. It's tight all along the handle. As far as I can tell, there's no gaps, but this metal piece is too tall and I can't quite see. So there may be some gaps. So I'll let this dry for 24 hours. I'll come back, take clamps off, bring you guys along. Um, I'll try and beep all the swearing because that's a long ways to go to find out it didn't work. If there's some gaps, I can mix up some some wood. I have some of the dust and actually I have some extra of the wood. I can put it on my, my um, sander, make some powder, mix it with some glue and I can put it in the holes and re-let that dry again. And that's probably what I'll end up doing. It's not like this thing has to hold a thousand pounds, four or five pound rainbows max. So anyway, let this dry for 24 hours. Um, you didn't get to see all of it because, well, I ended up losing my marbles, cutting myself in a dozen places, and uh, and the glue was starting to set. I mean, I was like, thank goodness I wasn't using that quick set foaming Gorilla Glue because I think it's been almost, um, yeah, it's been an hour and 20 minutes for me to get that organized. So I'm glad I went with that glue. Anyway, fingers crossed. And in the magic, you see you guys right now. Okay guys, it's been just about 30 hours after the glue up. I'm gonna take the clamps off today, have a look. Either I'll be drinking for celebration or I'll be drinking for sorrows. As long as it's mostly glued, I think I can solve the rest. So anyway, let's get at it. Let's take this uh, clamps off. I think it's going to take a little while because I'm pretty sure it glued itself to the form. I did put down a lot of tape, thank goodness. Hopefully that will pay off.
of my concerns was what's exactly happening. Oh, so the thickness has changed so it's slid. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sand it all down and get it to be level to the thickness of that is unfortunate. The wood slid, so I might be able to round it, but by the time I sand off the mistakes where the wood slipped, the net might be too small. So, that's a fail. Uh, learned a couple big lessons on that. One is the two pieces of um, thins that I was using for strips were different widths so I couldn't actually push them down um, flat so that's a lesson I will make some more wood oh I gotta go buy some more wood make some more strips and I will take that lesson away but I'm gonna try and sand this up a little bit and see if it's not salvageable it doesn't have to hold a lot of weight but you can see maybe if I get it close up let's see if I can look at this in the camera um there's very deep pockets here where the the purple heart slipped and on this side you can see that it's raised way up from the handle so we'll see if I can get it on the sander and Maybe salvage something. I mean, it's a lot of work to get to this point, so you might as well, might as well give it a try. All right, to the sander. To the sander, Batman. off a bunch of material um, I think I'm going to be able to recover it I don't want to take off any more here it's just well maybe I can sand a little bit more in there but this side is a little bit too deep so I'll sand a little bit more off here So there's some purple heart and there's some of my uh, IPE that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to put in some glue and then just 
make myself a really nice wood grain filler that's exactly the right color and hopefully that'll that'll uh, fill those holes up okay let's uh, get some of that in there really got to force it in because if you don't just a quick sand and you'll be you'll be right back where you started all right that one's filled let's see if we make a little more here start filling these ones these ones are going to be a lot bigger you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself because it does dry quickly. Hey, once you get yourself a nice even paste start putting her in may have to um, do this in two coats with the light sand in between to to see if you got it all but as long as you're forcing it in there it should be okay now hopefully I can save this this big boo-boo I mean, it'll still work as a net, right? But so now I got this round edge. I can run over this, make sure it's pushed in there nicely. There you go. Now you can while it's wet. Try and remove some of it from the outside. The excess. That way it'll be easier, obviously, to sand afterwards. Okay, I've got these pushed in pretty good. So that's it for that. I learned this in grade 8 woodworking well actually it might have been my father he told me he's like there's no better match for your for your wood filler than the wood itself and that is so true so I'm just gonna force it up inside there hey guys thanks for watching so far if you found any value in what you're seeing on making this fishing net Please think about uh, subscribing down below and don't forget to hit that bell uh, so you'll be notified when other videos have been posted. Thanks for watching you guys. Okay, so what I have here is a biscuit joiner and I don't have the router table um, and or the, the proper slot cutting bit. So I thought, well, why not use a biscuit joiner? It has the perfect workstation that I can adjust to the thickness of my net. I can adjust how much the slot cutter comes out and then I can actually just um, work the net along the slot just like I would, you know, with, um, with a router bit. So I've given it some tests. The tests were successful. I was able to cut some nice slots. I managed to get them down to 
Um, I fine-tuned it with a couple pieces of Gorilla Tape just to take off a little tiny bit at a time. So I'm going to give this a go and hopefully I don't ruin my net. Well, it's a slight bit off center, but it cut into the first piece of wood. It was a little deeper than I would have wanted, but it'll work. Okay, to prepare for putting the holes in to sew the net in, I put tape all the way around it and I'm gonna put the actual net on and mark it because I'm afraid that if I calculate wrong, I'll make a mistake. So I put the net on with some Velcro and then I just went ahead and marked all the spots that needed to be drilled so that I could tie it in two places. So once I had done that, I the holes and I drilled through with the tape on it and you can see the marks there. So then I just drilled through and tried to keep them to come up in the center so they were in the middle on the inside. Just hung this up on a wire in the area of my shop where I don't care if there's drips coming down. Um, so I am going to, the holes are drilled. Um, it's sanded from a 220 to a 320 to a 400. I just did a final 400 on it. And then I put a tack cloth on it. But I also have um, a couple of my fly boxes that I made that I'm also going to paint. So all I've done is I just put some screws through a foam square so that I can paint this side and then flip it over and it won't leave any marks or very minimal marks. That way I can do both sides. Anyway, I'm gonna go mix some paint. I'll show you what it is. Um, it's very expensive. I wouldn't recommend it if you don't already have it for another purpose. Like I said, it was for archery equipment so it's a very hard, hard shelled um, epoxy paint that I really enjoy for this kind of stuff. But, you know, you can use a spray can, uh, urethane, or a verithane, or any of those kind of, um, for $12 at the Home Depot or whatever, and it should work fine. All right, I'm going to do this and uh, get started. Okay, there's the two-part um, epoxy finish. Like I say, it was meant for bows, but um, it's super, super, super strong, and it doesn't crack. And it can withstand flexing, which is not important in this case, but um, it'll keep it from cracking. So I'm just going to mix uh, one part of this, one part of this, and then I'm going to add some thinner to it because I'm going to brush it and I want it to go on in thin coats. Nothing beats the contrast of that purple heart. Just Now, as far as the stitching is concerned, I basically just pushed the line through, went around one of the brackets inside, one of the rubber pieces, and then went back out. And I continued to do this all the way around, and I kept it loose so that I could tighten at the end. I used a piece of stainless steel wire as a needle. I didn't actually have a needle, but if I could have found an actual regular sock darning needle, it would have worked perfectly. But in this case, sorry it takes so long here, I'm just doing it one hand while I'm trying to film. So I go in, around the rubber basket and I, there's two per square and I kind of like that because it gives it more more lift area and then I just pull back all the loose lacing it and then back outside so pushing it back out and then once I've gone all the way around I tie I tightened it all up I tied a knot at each end and then I put a little bit of epoxy to hold the knot from coming out this actually took very long. It was about an hour and 45 minutes, so it was quite time consuming.
Oh well, guys, sorry it took so long. I mean, it was like two weeks worth of work for me to try and pile into, you know, one hour video. But if you were really interested in it and you waited this long, thank you. Um, you will learn a, a lot and hopefully it helps you out a little bit. Anyway, that is my first one and I will be making more. Now that I have my jig and my next project, I'm making a way better thickness sander. You've seen one in my video. Uh, I'm making a way nicer one. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. I'm Scott from Realistic Outdoors.